Are you starting to put together your Glacier National Park trip and you feel overwhelmed? We're gonna break it down for you so you have the trip of a lifetime. Hey there, I'm Alex from Alex on the Map and I grew up right by Glacier National Park so I have a pretty good idea of how to enjoy the park and make the most of your time there. I've spent countless hours in this park enjoying it and also putting together trips for my custom national park itinerary service. To be honest though, planning a glacier trip isn't the easiest, especially with all the reservation systems they have nowadays and because the park has become super popular lately, meaning accommodations, rental cars, things like that book up super quickly in advance. Plus there's just the added anxiety of not knowing a place, knowing where to fly in, all that. We're gonna go over pretty much everything in this guide so buckle up because it is very thorough. Before we get started though I'm going to recommend that you stop at Apgar Village and grab some huckleberry ice cream while you are there either at the beginning of your trip or at the end in order to celebrate. All right first and foremost I'm going to share a map of Glacier National Park with you so you can get a general idea of where certain attractions are located and where you need to be in order to see them. I'm also going to share some quick basics so you get an idea of what to expect when traveling to Glacier. First and foremost, the park was founded May 10th of 1910. It's one of the older parks in the system, and over the past few years, the visitation rates has fluctuated, but it stays roughly around 3 million a year. The park is located in the state of Montana, and a fun fact, it is also home to 26 glaciers, although it was home to 150 when the park was first starting to become one. You can thank climate change for that. All right, let's break down the things you must know about traveling to Glacier. First and foremost is how to get there. If you are flying into Glacier National Park, you are going to fly into the Glacier Park International Airport. Located about 20 minutes from the west side of the park entrance, it's typically how visitors choose to get there. However, with traffic, it can be a little bit more like 35 minutes. If you're driving to the park, you're most likely going to take Highway 2 in order to get there, or Highway 89 if you are planning on visiting visiting the east side of the park. Fun fact, you can also ride the Amtrak train to Glacier National Park if you would like. There are stops in both Whitefish, which is a small town located near Glacier, and East Glacier Park where you can get off and explore the east side. Another thing I am going to mention is I have a ton of videos on Glacier National Park, so you're going to want to check out each of those in order to get a full understanding of what you can see and do in the park. I have a more comprehensive video about the top things to do in Glacier, but I'll run through my top five and the things I think you shouldn't miss when you are there. Number one is going to the Sun Road, which many people go to Glacier just to drive this fantastic road through the park. One thing I am going to mention is that Glacier has required reservations in order to enter the park and drive going to the sun for the past few years. I keep updated videos on this because the system kind of changes year from year, so you're definitely going to want to check that out for sure. But know that going to the Sun Road is an incredible part of the park and you're kind of missing out if you don't make it a top priority. Number two is hiking the trails. Glacier has some of the best hiking trails in the entire country and before it blew up on social media, it was kind of known as a hiker's park. You can't go wrong with any of the trails and I definitely recommend you check out my video on the best hikes in Glacier if that is a priority for you. Lake McDonald is another spot you're not going to want to miss. Not only has it become super popular on social media because of its colored pebbles, but it's also just a hub for water activities and a place to enjoy after a long day of exploring. Another top thing I recommend is taking a boat tour either on Lake McDonald or several of the different lakes that offer them throughout the park. Boat tours are a huge part of the history of Glacier and I'll have a future video on that, but know that it's a unique way to enjoy the park and experience it from a totally different angle. The final top thing that I recommend you do is look for wildlife while you are in Glacier. Glacier is home to some amazing wildlife including grizzly and black bears, moose, elk, just pretty much everything. So keeping a lookout for that while you are hiking or on these boat tours can be a great addition to your trip. All right, when should you visit Glacier National Park? And the answer is maybe not as straightforward as you might think it is. Obviously the busiest time a year to visit is during the summer months of July and August, but frankly I've been pretty much in all season and each one has its own charm. My personal tip is visiting September after Labor Day, but there are some things you're going to want to keep in mind like facilities being closed if you choose to do so. If you want a more depth analysis of this, I have a video on the best time to 
visit, which breaks it down month by month, temperature, all that information you need to know. If you're curious of how many days you should spend in Glacier, the more the better. I've spent probably collective a total of months in the park and I still haven't seen everything I want to see. It's just that massive and there's just that much to do. However, of course, most of us don't have all that time in the world to explore, so I recommend at least three days in order to make your visit worthwhile. Of course, you can go in for just a day and see some things, but it's not the same as getting to spend at least three days there. This is especially true if you plan on seeing the east side of the park because it does take some time in order to get over there and it's at least a day in order to really enjoy it. You should definitely check out my Glacier National Park itinerary video to get an idea of what you should be doing day by day with the amount of time that you have. The closest airport to Glacier National Park is FCA or Glacier Park International Airport. Again, it's located about 20 to 35 minutes depending on traffic to the west side of the park, making it super convenient. And you can also find rental car options there as well. I will say that flying into Glacier Park International Airport is a little bit more expensive than you might get to flying into other areas of Montana, say Missoula or Bozeman. But it is convenient because you don't have a long drive in order to get to the park once you arrive. It really comes down to your budget and how much you are willing to drive in order to get to the places you need to go to. If you're curious about where you should stay when visiting Glacier, it really depends on which area you want to explore the most. If you are only spending about two or three days and you plan on focusing on the west side of the park, then there are a bunch of small towns there where you can find hotel accommodations. If you are staying on the east side of the park, your options are going to be a lot more limited and they're going to book up a lot faster. If you're looking to stay on the west side, Whitefish, Columbia Falls, and Kalispell are typically the best options. Of course, the farther you get from the park, the cheaper it will be, the closer you get, the more expensive. So just keeping that in mind when you are booking your accommodations. However, on the east side of the park, the towns that are closest Two of the park are the ones you are going to want to stay in. There's not a lot of wiggle room when it comes to budget on that, but just keeping that in mind when you are setting aside what you want to spend for your trip. If you are staying on the east side, East Glacier Park and St. Mary are typically the most common options. If you are expecting perfect weather in Glacier National Park when you are visiting, I am sorry to say you probably won't get it. Depending on what time of year you are there, you can expect to experience sometimes all seasons within one day. I've had days in the park where it started out super cold and even snow and then gone up into the 80s and this was in the spring so you're probably not going to get that variation in the summer but know that there are a lot of changes during the day. Also know that there is some elevation gain especially when you are driving going to the Sun Road so you're likely to experience some different weather patterns as you go up. I have a whole video about how to pack for this but just keep in mind layers are your best friends and I always recommend you bring a pair of hiking boots or shoes with good traction just so you know you're not going to slip and slide on the hiking trails. If you want to get around Glacier National Park, you actually have more than one option, which you don't necessarily need to bring a car in order to enjoy. In fact, if you want to skip the whole reservation system in general, you can take the Glacier National Park shuttle instead. Once you park your car at Apgar on the west side, you can jump on the shuttle to pretty much all the major stops that you would expect on going to the Sun Road and throughout the park. You can also, of course, bring your own rental car if you would like throughout the park, but know that you will probably need to have a reservation in hand in order to do so. Personally, I choose a combination of shuttle and car depending on what exactly I'm planning on seeing or which hikes I'm planning on taking on. This is why it might be a good idea to watch my video on the Glacier National Park shuttle, just so you get an idea of where it stops and whether it would be a good fit for you. Are you struggling on planning your national park trip? Let's face it, between between accommodations, figuring out the reservation system, and a lot more, it's just overwhelming planning your national park trip sometimes. This can cost you a lot of time and money just figuring out your itinerary. If you're looking for some help planning your trip, I offer a custom national park itinerary service that walks you through day by day what you need to know before you go. This itinerary will save you a lot of time and money and allows you to get to the park and actually enjoy your trip instead of
of worrying about all the details. I plan hundreds of national park trips for clients, which has helped them enjoy their whole experience a lot more. So what does one of these custom itineraries include? You can expect reservation information if needed, suggestions on where to stay, what to eat and what to do, and tips and recommendations for your specific park. You'll love the itinerary I plan for you or you get your money back. Here are some testimonials from some of my clients. Alex was very responsive to my request for assistance in planning our upcoming trip to Glacier National Park. We were unfamiliar with the park and it was helpful to get specific recommendations of where to stay, eat, and what to do while we're out there to make the most of our vacation from Barbara. Alex was more than prompt in responding to my request for an itinerary. Her selections fit perfectly with the criteria I requested. She's been great about following up and making sure that our needs are met from Samantha. If you're interested in this, I offer a 15 minute consultation call for free where you can tell me about your concerns for your national park trip and I can give you more information on how I can help you. You can find that out in the description below and book your call there. Okay, here are some tips I have for visiting Glacier National Park. Number one is preparing for that varied weather. The biggest mistake I see people make when they travel to Glacier is just expecting that it's going to be beautiful all the time. And during the summer months, it usually is. However, it can also get very hot, hotter than you might expect high in the mountains. So just expect that we might get rain and snow one minute and sun the next. Typically having those hiking essentials will have you covered. Another thing to keep in mind is bear safety. And I'm gonna preface this by saying the chances of running into a bear and glacier are so, so, so small, especially when you consider how many people visit per year. That being said, I will say that I have personally had two bear encounters while in Glacier and it has not been fun and bear spray has saved me both those times. Thankfully, bear spray is not that difficult to get. You can even rent it at the airport, which is super convenient. And then when you are done with it, you just return it before you board your flight because you cannot take bear spray on a plane with you. Another thing I recommend is getting up very early and if you are dealing with that reservation system, then it might be best just to avoid it in general altogether by getting up and into the park before 6 a.m. It may seem really early, but you are only there once and you are much more likely to find parking at places like Logan Pass or super popular trailheads where it's difficult to get a spot. I also recommend getting off the beaten path a little bit. Of course, you're gonna wanna see places like Lake McDonald and Logan Pass, but know that they are super popular, especially during those prime summer months. In fact, I would recommend looking into taking on maybe some lesser known hikes like Pegan Pass or Gunsight Pass. Those are personally some of my favorites and you almost never see anyone taking those on as well. Another thing I recommend is engaging with the local culture as well. Uh, so many people fly into the glacier area and just enjoy the park and leave and don't take time to really get to explore and interact with local people. This has caused a little bit of friction in the local area, so I recommend checking out some local restaurants and shops just to get a feel of that Montana culture and get to know some of the people who live here. All right, I'm gonna answer some common FAQs about visiting Glacier National Park and hopefully get your questions answered. The first question is, does Glacier National Park require reservations? And the answer is, over the past few years, they have. Every year has been a little bit different according to what the needs of the park are, so you might be watching a video or reading an article about a reservation system that happened two or three years ago. I will keep my videos updated, so if you have any questions, you can take a look at the corresponding year and figure out what the reservation system means for you. The tickets for these reservations usually go on sale several months in advance, so you will either need to pick them up then or the day before you plan on entering the park. It's very complicated and it's a whole video in and of itself, so I definitely recommend you check out my corresponding video depending on what year you're visiting to get a greater idea of what the reservation system means. How much does it cost to enter Glacier National Park? Over the past few years, it has cost about $35 for a seven day pass. So you can enter and exit as many times as you want within that seven day period, paying $35. Of course, if you plan on visiting Glacier more than that, you can purchase their annual pass, which is $70. And there is the annual America the Beautiful Pass, which is $80 and gives you access to all of the national park, monument, historic sites for a really good fee, in my opinion. Basically, if you plan on visiting more than three national parks, it pays for itself. Which entrance for Glacier National Park is the best? 
It really depends on what you plan on seeing and doing while you are in the park. If you have a limited amount of time, I recommend you mostly stay at the west side just because it makes it easier to get to and from the airport. But if you have a longer period of time, definitely you're going to want to be able to check out that east side. West side has a whole bunch of different activities like horseback riding, rafting, tours, things like that. While the east side is more of a hiker friendly area and the nature there is just absolutely incredible. There's also the North Fork area, which is a bit more rural and fun so you won't see as many crowds there. It's just a, a unique experience compared to the rest of the park. So I wouldn't say any entrance is necessarily best or worst. It just depends what you want to get out of your trip. Which is better, Glacier National Park or Yellowstone National Park? They are so different. <laughs> If you are looking for a very family friendly park with little walking and lots to enjoy, then Yellowstone is fantastic. I have a whole bunch of videos on Yellowstone with more coming out, so you'll be able to find out more information about that park. But I would say if you are a nature addict and you love hiking, then Glacier is probably your best bet. I also think it comes out better in photos if you're a photographer. I wouldn't say again, one is better or the other. It just really depends what you want out of your trip. And many people choose to combine the two in a 10 day trip or so, two week trip or so. Um, I planned a lot of those trips for my clients and that way they get a little bit of both on their journey. Our dogs allow Allowed in Glacier National Park. Yes, dogs are allowed anywhere there is a paved road. So you're not allowed to take them on the trails unless they are a service animal, but they can come with you on going to the Sun Road. You can take them to the shores of Lake McDonald on a leash. So yes, that is definitely something you can do with them. They're also allowed in all camping areas, so you can camp with your pup as well. Can I take my RV on going to the Sun Road? So the answer is if it fits within the size limitations, then yes, you can, but most RVs won't. Vehicles have to be less than 21 feet long, eight feet wide, and 10 feet tall. And if you have been on going to the Sun Road, it is quite narrow, so yes, it just makes it so much better than worrying about falling off the side of the road because you have a large vehicle coming at you. What should I know about visiting Waterton Lakes near Glacier National Park? One of the amazing things about Glacier is that it is connected to Waterton Lakes National Park in Canada. They are sister parks and the first international peace park in the world. This means that you can enter through Glacier at Goat Haunt to Waterton and vice versa. You will need your passport in hand. It's just another amazing thing to do while you are in Glacier. Many of my clients have found this super worthwhile on their trip to Glacier. Are there parts of Glacier National Park that are accessible? There are a number of accessible spots like visitor center, campgrounds, and such. But overall, I wouldn't say that Glacier is the most accessibility friendly park. However, I do recommend you check out the amazing Trail of the Cedars because it is fully boardwalk and accessible as well. Do I need bear spray for Glacier National Park? I would say if you are planning on heading out on any of the trails in Glacier, you should have your bear spray in hand and know how to use it. Even on popular trails, that's where I've actually run into bears, so you just never know when they're going to pop up. Again, the chances of running into them are very low, but it's just better to be safe rather than sorry. What are some must-have items I need to pack with me when I go to Glacier? There are some things I just always bring with me no matter what activity I'm doing in Glacier. Whether I'm hiking or driving the road or backpacking, here are some things I always bring with me. One is layered clothing, sturdy hiking boots, rain gear, sun protection, bear spray, hydration and snacks, very important and a camera and binocular. Of course, obviously, if I'm backpacking, that's a whole different story, but I still bring those items with me even if I am just taking a day hike or driving around the park. I hope this has helped you plan your Glacier National Park trip. If you wanna hit that subscribe button and the bell notification, you'll get more videos on Glacier and our other national parks.